So we never worried about punctuation. He always graded on your thought and if you expressed your thought well. Imagine that, you're in high school. You don't have to worry about punctuation. You just give your feelings on a particular subject and he grades you on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Oh. Yo, welcome back. I've never really done a tribute vlog. I've been a thinking and I think it's time to give tribute to an individual. You're a ride or die, I thank you. And if you're new to the channel, <laughs> yeah, you know what to do. I think about this individual a lot. It's not a family member, it's not a baseball player, it's not a movie star. It happens to be the greatest single teacher I've ever come across in my whole entire life. His name's Mr. Atkinson. I ain't been in school in like 25 years, so I still think about this guy. Why? Because I think this guy awoke the beast. I know exactly what you mean. He's an English teacher, okay? He's the one that got me to start thinking about life, life, life. In the early 90s, we all thought we were cool. We all thought we was gangsta and stuff. And I walked into an English class and I was pissed, mad, filled with discontent. Couldn't stand where I was at. I had Mr. Atkinson. He had a full-on beard. He always wore a beret. You walked into the classroom and there was posters everywhere. Marlon Brando, The Outsider, Janis Joplin. Like old school girls back in the day, movie stars. I don't know who they are and I wish I knew so I could show the picture of them right now. Mug shots. A classroom that you'd walk in and you would always have something to look at. This teacher was very unorthodox. His tactics weren't very normal. Usually you walk into a class, you talk about a syllabus and here's what we're gonna do this year. No, we walked in, the first thing that he wanted us to do was Watch Cool Hand Luke. Stay down. You're beat. You're gonna have to kill me. I didn't think it was a big deal then. I thought it was a really cool movie, but now when I think about it, it's... We analyzed Cool Hand Luke the first week every day like it was the Bible. He made us write down quotes and discuss things. He took on the persona of the head of the prison for the rest of the school year. And it wasn't even like, oh, he was a mean teacher. No, he, he was very strict, but he was not mean. And if you know anything about Cool Hand Luke, it's all about rules and regulations. What we have here is failure to communicate. Anytime a, a, a kid would say something out of line, he would bring that up. And it's almost like I've taken on his persona and certain things from the, the warden, from Cool Hand Luke. And then my favorite quote is, I, I could be a nice guy. Oh, I can be one real mean son of a bitch. And he set the tone. He never had to raise his voice, but he was a regulator. He, he had us on point. If we had to sharpen a pencil, we had to be like, sharpen my pencil, boss. He'd be like, <laughs> I'm shaking it, boss. Sharpen your pencil. He, no one ever took bathroom breaks. In the beginning of the year, he said, no bathroom breaks. And everybody follows the rule without question, which you can't make a student not go to the bathroom, but no one ever did. If you got caught chewing gum, he'd give you a choice. He'd be like, you can either get written up or go to detention, or you can put it behind your ear for the rest of the class. Any man don't keep order spends a night in the box. And everybody who ever got caught chewing gum, guess what they did? They put it behind the ear for the rest of the day. I can't spell and I have never cared for spelling, but this guy had weekly spelling tests and vocabulary words that I always cared about. Why? Because I didn't want to be proven wrong. I remember one word for sure that I never will forget, and it was the longest one we ever had, was anti disestablishmentarianism And the definition he got was against the people who are against. Almost 30 years later, I still remember that. Anytime we'd have a vacation or, or it would be a long weekend, we'd come out all loud and stuff, you know? He would make us sit in our chair, he would make us close our eyes and sit there for three minutes. It would, it seemed like 45 minutes, but probably only like three minutes. And now that I think about it, he's a genius. Because after those three minutes, when we open our eyes, the whole class would be all calm and chilled out. Use the force. Basically, he made us meditate. There was always that respect factor in there. Without saying it or demanding it, the way he approached things, calm, and with that serious look in his eye, we always like did whatever he told him. He was the first guy that let me tap into like my creative process, because I hated reading. For a guy my age, at 13, 14, 15, whatever I was, I remember we read The Outsiders, Rumblefish. There's a book about addiction that I even got for my daughter lately called Go Ask Alice, about a journal about a girl battling a addiction and prostitution and homelessness. 
homelessness, they weren't those boring books. It was, it was like real life books, you know? Not that those happy, happy, joy, joy ones. To Kill a Mockingbird. We always would like read the book and then he would treat us with the movie after and we'd analyze that, you know? I don't know, I appreciate that guy because I thought I was too freaking cool for school. He made us think. The ideal is unnatural naturalness or natural unnaturalness. It's crazy what he used to make us do. There's this one time where we had a book, it was a, a poem book, where about people and their occupations. And you know me, I'm like the cool cat. I had French braids and I thought I was all hood, which I wasn't, but I thought I was all hood. We didn't get to pick. He assigned what occupations that we would recite. We couldn't just recite the poem. We had to get in character, dress up, and then perform in front of the class. And you know what this teacher did, Mr. Atkinson? The occupation he gave me? Yeah, a prostitute. Hey Sugar, you looking for a date? My mom was a hairdresser at that time. I put braids in my hair, I wore a little leopard miniskirt, and I performed the poem in full character, eyeshadow, blush, makeup. <sighs> the coolest guy in school. And I performed it and got a freaking A plus on that junk. And it was funny as heck. No one was scared to express themselves in that class. I think about that guy all the time. The way I watch movies now, the way I read books, the way I converse with people, there's always like a deeper, deeper, deeper meaning in everything, if you're looking. He never graded on punctuation, so we never worried about punctuation. He always graded on your thought and if you expressed your thought well. Imagine that, you're in high school. You don't have to worry about punctuation. You just give your feelings on a particular subject and he grades you on that. That alone, you put yourself at ease. So what's crazy is like, I have always looked at movies as you guys probably know with clips and I reference real life, the media and books and movies and poems that I see. I always wanted to be a teacher because of him. Life hit me upside the head and I dropped out of college and I never became a teacher. <laughs> Just think about those few teachers that affected you today. I'm well into fatherhood and I think about my high school teacher all the time. I appreciate the effort that he put into our class. He kicked it down to us. It was about like expressing your views, your thoughts, making a parallel with media and books and poems with your own life. Message! I did a Google search today just to see like, hey, maybe he's still around and uh, I found an article about him that another student of his wrote that's pretty similar to this video and just thanking him and that individual is a, a writer now. I got to the end and it said that he passed in 2015 and he survived by his daughter. If somehow magically this video gets to his daughter for some crazy reason, your father affected people a lot in a good way. I'm not even related to him. I have my own family and I think of Mr. Atkinson, especially when I get into movies and poems and I tap into that creative process that I love so dearly. So, Mr. Atkinson, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for not being normal, being eccentric, making us think. Thank you for demanding respect because I learned how to act, you know? I, I don't know. <laughs> my pencil boss, go ahead, drag line. Yeah, I'll never forget him. Here's to uh, not failing to communicate. Understood? Get. He was smiling. Smiling. <laughs> That's right. You know that uh, that Luke smile of his. He had it on his face right to the very end. Hell, if they didn't know it for it, they could tell right then that they weren't ever going to beat him.